and try to put that into our system with a journal entry. So let's see what this gets a little bit more complex. Let's see what this will look like in, in Excel, and then we'll do the same thing in uh, a QuickBook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this part from F to M. I'm gonna right click and, I mean, I'm just gonna, well, you could right click and copy. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put that right here uh, and right click and paste it. And then I'm gonna hide this stuff because I, I wanna see my data on the left-hand side. Can I put my cursor on F, the skinny, and go on over to M, right-click and hide all of that stuff. And so now we've got a nice little worksheet that we can work on. I'm gonna just delete everything that's in it. I'm gonna make that red thing go away by, by putting my cursor up here and go into the Home tab, Font, I mean Format Painter and Paint Brushy that away. And then let's make this uh, get rid of that data. All right, so now we've got our nice little system that we can we can put in here in a journal entry type of format. So now what I want to do is think about a journal entry that's going to help me to 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 grab all of the detail from these reports. So we'll make and you can start to format just a, a generic journal entry when we do this in QuickBooks. And this again is similar to what apps some apps are doing when they're trying to integrate and pull in data into the system. A similar kind of process here. So we'll start off with the Shopify sales. I'm not going to worry about debits being on top, right? I'm going to pull it in as I'm thinking about it, right? So I'm going to say, well, I know that I have a Shopify sales. So let's just call that Shopify sales. I'm going to say equals that one. And the Shopify sales are the gross sales from our report. I'm going to put the sales as a negative. So I'm going to say negative of this number because revenue from a debit and credit standpoint is a credit and I'm representing credits with negative numbers. I know that's a little bothersome to people, but we have to deal with debits and credits <laughs> when we do the journal entry. So, uh, so that's what we'll do. And I'm dealing with one column because that's the most efficient way to deal with it and negative numbers in Excel. So I highly recommend if you're an accountant thinking about formatting like that because it really saves space. And then we've got the Shopify discount. So Shopify discount. And we said that one is going to be a debit. So I have it as a negative number over here. So I need to flip the sign. I'm going to say negative of that number. I'm just pulling in the data with formulas, which is my habit of doing when I'm when I'm working a practice problem to have the data over here and then pull the information in with formulas. Okay, so then, so so this was the sales, and then we had discounts, which lower it's going to be kind of like lowering the sales, right? So we could we could record that separately as like a a uh, contra sales line. So here's my sales, and then the discounts. We could group them together. Here's my sales after the discounts, right? But the whole point is here we're breaking out some of the detail of these line items, and then if we had uh, if we had Shopify returns. We didn't have any Shopify returns, but just for the sake of keeping our journal entry with all the different components that could be in here, we'll put that in there and then Shopify uh, shipping income. So now we're going to say, hey, look, this is what we our sales number was, but then we had uh, shipping income, meaning we charged the client, you know, for the for the shipping. So that's so we had to collect another 46 and that should be negative because it's going to be an income amount so it's going to be a revenue amount and then we had uh sales tax payable so let's say we had sales tax payable and so this is um, an amount that we charged the client for the sales tax but we're going to owe it to the government so th we should in theory put it in the books on as a payable it shouldn't hit the income statement. So we collected that from the client, but it's gonna go into our books as uh, not revenue, but rather a uh, payable. And then I'm gonna say we have the Shopify clearing account, Shopify, uh, Shopify clearing account. Now the clearing account is people question like, why, why do we need uh, the clearing account? Because we're gonna try to not put it directly into the checking account because notice that I'm getting this information from reports. 
and and the Shopify clearing is is going to eventually clear out into the checking account, but we're not there yet. And before I do the clearing, basically, hold on, I'll get into the clearing in a second. Before I do the clearing, uh, let's do the Shopify let's do the Shopify PayPal clearing account first. So the PayPal clearing. Why do we need a PayPal clearing? Same kind of thing that we're looking at these reports, which show that there was a payment that went through the payment portal of PayPal. So we, we, someone got on our Shopify store. They didn't use the Shopify payments. They used the third party integration of PayPal. So we expect then the deposit to, to come in through PayPal into our bank feeds. Although there could be fees related to that amount which we'll have to deal with on the PayPal level of things. So instead of putting this directly into the PayPal checking account, we could do that because then we can try to match the PayPal checking account to this report, but it might not match exactly because of the fees on the PayPal level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into a clearing account. And then when the, when the, pro, when the payment comes through, the deposit comes through on the checking account, will net out the clearing account so the clearing account goes back to zero this is one of the most confusing components not only with this manual entry process but with a lot of the apps that people kind of recommend so you're going to have to deal with this concept <laughs> and so it's useful to see it in excel so you can kind of see what's going on here so then we have shopify fees so let's pick up the fees down here these are the fees you'll recall that happened on the payout report the fees from Shopify because these are the sales that were paid out with the Shopify pay, not with the third party PayPal integration. And Shopify charged us, you know, the fees then, which we which we're going to see come through uh, before we get the payment that comes out. So we, so this payment should tie out exactly to what we get in our checking account, whereas this payment for to the PayPal most likely will not because PayPal is still going to hit us with some fees before it hits our bank account. So we're going to say, all right, this one is going to be this uh, 354. Actually, hold on a sec. This is the 15 and I need to flip the sign. So there it is. Okay. And then I'm going to have the Shopify clearing account, Shopify payments clearing account. So this is the other one that eventually, and that's going to be, let's put, pull the number in. That's going to be this number. This is the other one that will eventually uh, go into the checking account. And we could put this one directly into the checking account probably because, because this is the amount that exactly should hit our checking account because there shouldn't be any other fees because we're getting this information directly from Shopify, not a third party payment app like PayPal where the PayPal is gonna hit us with fees. So if I put this directly into the checking account, then I probably, once the deposit clears the checking account, could use the matching mechanism in QuickBooks and that would probably work okay. But this idea of using these, these uh, clearing accounts is usually a good practice because then if there is any discrepancies, then we can deal with it on the clearing account level. So we'll see what these clearing accounts do. Now, if there was anything that was 